WBNE. Hello, and welcome to episode 52, all about The Last Debate, chapter 9, book 5 of The Return of the King, being the 52nd part of That's What I'm Talking About. Hello, my name is Mary Clay. If that's too complicated for you, just call me MC. And today I'm joined by Delia and Bayana from Black Girls Create. Welcome. Hi. Hi. So I originally came across you guys because I think I saw the Harry Potter Alliance was sharing your stuff. And I was like, oh, cool. A huge group of women who seem like nerds. Yeah. I bet yeah, one of them likes Lord of the Rings. So, <laughs> and it turns out that you guys were doing a special like Patreon series for Lord of the Rings. So why don't you um, tell the listeners a little bit about who you are and how your what your involvement with Black Girls Create is. Sure. So I'm Bayana. I am co-founder and editor-in-chief of Black Girls Create, which is a hub for Black creators and critical fandom. So we do a whole lot of stuff, um, including we highlight Black women creators, we um, publish essays on critical fandom, we have a fan fiction project for Black Potterheads to write like stories within the wizarding world, we have a Harry Potter podcast called Wizard Team, Doctor Who podcast called Who Watched Time and Relative Blackness in Space, and other things that I'm sure I'm, like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've missed some things, but... Um, yeah, we do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and then most recently, we've done our Patreon like limited podcast series on The Lord of the Rings. I'm Delia. I'm the marketing director for Black Girls Create. So I market all of the many, many much stuff we do. <laughs> That's why I'm like, we definitely do a lot. Um, but yeah, we just finished uh, Tolkien Black Girls is what our limited podcast series on Patreon is called. Eventually, one day, once it's done we finish recording, but it's still airing per se on Patreon. But one day it'll be released to the public. So if you follow us, eventually one day you can yep. check that out too. Yep. Or you can nice. be a patron and it's already there. There you yeah, go. Yeah, perfect. You got too. Hey, there you go. <laughs> and can you guys tell me a little bit about how you both got into Lord of the Rings? Oh boy. Yeah. We actually Our have stories pretty are similar actually, stories. I was going to say, yeah, they're very similar. Uh, we both have dads who were really into it which is i don't know if like probably your listeners of color but definitely like your black listeners can relate like it's a very like it's known you guys said on the on the last episode it's a very white book and so yep. like <laughs> and like it's uh definitely not something you would expect but there's something about lord of the rings that really draws i think that generation just in general um to the books. And so my dad loved Lord of the Rings. And so as soon as I was old enough to sit down on the floor and watch it with him, which was, I was, I don't know, like seven, eight, I don't know. I was really young. Like I was a child <laughs> and I was like, what is this? Let me sit down while my dad's watching it. And that was kind of it. I loved it and watched it all the time. If I heard it in the living room, cause he was watching it or it came on what did it used to come on TNT or whatever, I'd run in and that would be our day for the rest of the day. Yeah, and mine is similar, except my dad, like, took me to the theater to watch it. I was watching it, like, pretty, I mean, now I've, I've <laughs> this particular year, I've watched it, like, three times. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> like, back when I was a kid, like, I was thinking about it, and I didn't realize how young I was when I first saw Fellowship. But I remember, like, specifically seeing it in the theater until I was about seven or something, like, six or seven or something like that. And I remember being, like, pretty terrified but also like really into it at the same time. Like it wasn't enough to make me like never want to watch it again. And then as I like got older, I kept trying to read the books. Um, mm -hmm. When I was in the seventh grade, I decided I was going to read The Two Towers for a book report. And it was the worst idea I've ever had. And yeah. It was like, it was <laughs> awful and I hated it. So I was so mad. But at that point, like I, it was too late to change. So I did the book report. I don't know what... I don't know anything about it. I don't remember anything about it other than that I had to do it. And so like every once in a while, I would like come back and be like, no, I really want to at least get through these books like once. And then in our community, we did like a group read. And so that was like the first time I had finally like gotten all the way through it because <laughs> it, it was yeah, it's a lot so in, this, in these. <laughs> like, similarly, yeah, doing in middle most. school, I thought I, I in middle school, I thought, okay, 
I'm going to read these books. I've been loving these movies. And I picked it up from the library. I don't know. I can't remember how far I got into fellowship, but it was not. No. <laughs> Maybe to Tom Bombadil. I really don't remember <laughs> because I checked out. <laughs> Honestly, though, that's that's like the most important part. Once you get to Tom Bombadil, the rest is just, you know, yeah, no, whatever. You can, that's what Frails. I learned in our community read dwarves yeah. whatever it's so funny that you picked two towers for the book report because in my opinion two towers is the worst of the three well okay so two towers is my favorite movie so in my head it was gonna be my favorite It'd be book. the favorite book yeah. and that's not really what happened what? but yeah that yeah. was my like logic behind it but i totally get it because i've heard that the reason that my complaints on two towers the book like every guest was like, don't worry, the movie fixes yeah. everything you're complaining about. And I was like, okay, great. 100%. So, like, yeah. I don't want to, I want you to love the movie, so I don't want to hype it up too much. But like, yeah, it's, Peter Jackson definitely, he loved it enough to see what was wrong with these books right. and fix. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, unlike a certain Fantastic Beast movie, which is a disaster. <laughs> Um, which I, by the way, I love listening to y'all talk about it um, on Wizard Team. Oh my gosh. Just trying to like make sense of it. <laughs> how absurd it is. I, oof, we try so hard. But also, <laughs> not. Because it, it, there are no answers. It's yeah. Just, it's awful. They're on crimes with Grindelwald now. And there's no, like, it's, at this point, it's derailed so much. Because at this point, it's like, there's nothing to help this. No. You can't fix it. You it's not going to get better. <laughs> Except for, like, to throw it away. <laughs> That's oh, the only man. way to fix it. <laughs> All right. Well, luckily, this is not Fantastic Beasts and the Crimes of Humanity. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> Um, This is The Last Debate, which I think is hilarious because... There's, like, not much fighting at all. Yeah, no, it's not a debate even, no. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, oh, it's going to get intense. Feelings are going to get, you know, high. And and someone's going to, I don't know, threaten to leave again. (laughs) And someone's going to try and, yeah, steal the ring from Frodo. And (laughs) Boromir's going to die all over. Because that's, like, that's just what I was expecting. And then, essentially, it was like, yeah, no, that's that's a good plan. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. The state of Gandalf was like, "Here, here's what I'm thinking," and everybody's like, "Yeah, yeah." Checks yeah. out. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. So, well, before we get to that part in the chapter, first it starts off with our homeboys, Legolas and Gimli, the homies, who we have not seen together in quite some time because the last. We, once again, I feel like an old-timey radio announcer, the last we saw them, (laughs) they were on the paths of the dead with Aragorn. Mm -hmm. And that was just a whole mystery that we weren't privy to, except now we are. Except now we are. (laughs) And I was just, like, so glad to see them back together, because they're, like, my favorites. Yeah. Uh, Who are are y'all's favorite characters, actually? Legolas. Yeah. <laughs> Love my glass. Nice. Okay, great. Famous. So we're all on the same page. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I will say like Boromir now as like an adult. I really like Boromir. Same. Um, When I was a kid, I was like, nah, hate him. He's evil. <laughs> but like, you know, nuance and stuff. <laughs> also, Sam. They're my yes. two. I, if I, I don't know if I could choose between Legolas and Sam. They're top two for me. Probably. I have been attacked by my listeners. I haven't been attacked by my <laughs> listeners, but I notoriously hate Boromir and Sam. So. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Sam is precious. <laughs> He's he's not. That was one of the first notes. I think I don't know if we had already started recording or not. But when I was going through my old notes from like the very beginnings, I wrote in all caps. I was like, "Sam, work with me here. I'm trying to like you." Oh no! (laughs) And he's just like annoying to me. Wow, people really can't see my face, but like I am distraught. (laughs) It's okay. You're not the first person. I understand that this is the very unpopular opinion. And um, I've had to like recently just be like, you know what? It's my podcast. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's, yeah. You can feel it. It's not. There are worse opinions in the world, and so that's true. I mean, that's true. I'm personally hurt and devastated. I know. But like, I, know. I get it. It's fine. <laughs> However, let's all keep in mind once again that I don't know what he does to end it. 
My current theory is that it's gonna end like the movie Holes. When Stanley is carrying Zero up the mountain because Madame Zeroni cursed his family. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it's gonna be Sam carrying Frodo. And that's my like running theory for like why everyone loves Sam and is like, no, he's redeemed. He's amazing. I really he's love brave. this analogy. Yeah, like, I do love the analogy because that is one of my favorite movies. So like, I didn't know movie. we were going to combine these Dude. fandoms, but here we are. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's a quality movie. It's I so can't good. tell you. I also, um, I had, this is embarrassing, but because I've gone like way deep into TikTok since Corona. Mm, <laughs> and right. one of mine, one of my TikToks that went viral was... Um, it was dubbed to the, I'm tired of this green call. Oh, it's too damn bad. I quote that all the time. All of the time. Oh, man. That's um, a good movie. But that's a great theory. I'm gonna have to, we're going to have to circle back when you finish so I can we can see if you're able to tie in holes or not. <laughs> okay, great. Um, <clears throat> where were we? Yeah, so Gimli and Legolas are like, oh, I hope Merry and Pippin are alive. Let's go try and find them. And Gimli is like, yeah, I really hope they're alive because otherwise that would have been that entire time that we spent chasing them around <laughs> the Middle Earth countryside, <laughs> trying to find them and save them from the orcs. It would just be a waste if they were dead. <laughs> and I'm like, Gimli, that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, to be fair, like, they did travel leagues on foot. Yeah. He's like, and I'm, that not was- a, I'm not a long distance. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as they enter Minas Tirith, Legolas is doing like beautiful elf Legolas stuff. <laughs> and Gimli is standing next to him, like glaring and stroking his beard. I just love it. <laughs> I just love any time they're together on page. Can we reference things in the movie that have passed? It's not even a spoiler. I'm just saying that like, they're sure. great characters yes. in the movie, but then, like, when I first read it, seeing them on page is even better together. Like, you'll see when you see the movie, but they're just, there's just a lot of, we've talked about this on our podcast, but a lot of Tolkien's writing can be quite dry. But when they're on pa- on the page, it's just so colorful and, like, their personalities are just jumping out at you on the page. And I yeah. love it. I just love their dynamic so much. <laughs> So when I realized we were reading this chapter and I was like, oh, we get a whole, the whole section of dust. (laughs) Like, listen, Gimli, I was so excited. Yeah, we really get um, all, pretty much all the characters except Frodo and Sam. Mm -hmm. Who needs Uh, them? They're just (laughs) stupid Sam. He can go. (laughs) They're just off trying to save the world. (laughs) No big deal. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, also they... Uh, so they're talking about Minas Tirith and Legolas is like, oh, I hope the city re- rebuilds and blah, blah, blah. And he refers to the people of the wood. And I was like, so are those the Ents? And then it also just reminded me, where are the Ents? They are just I th- gone. I think the Ents are like, we just gonna, we're just going to stay in Yeah, I think Fangorn. they're just chilling. Because they weren't even going to like, they weren't even going to fight Saruman until... They like really were until it was like them that was being harmed. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I think they were kind of like, well, we did our job. <laughs> Y'all have fun over there. <laughs> yeah, they were like, we got, we got, we got Isengard on lock. You got, you got the rest. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just whenever I see them reference like trees or people of the wood or and I'm just, it just reminds me that like tree beard should be here. And that is a travesty. Whatever. Uh, I digress. <laughs> um, <laughs> She's not bitter y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that like literally the Ents could save us all and they're chilling off crying because they, you know, drove the Ent wives away. I was about to say because they mean, lost yeah, I was their wives. Say, they can't yeah. even get the Ent wives. <laughs> Like, <laughs> whatever. Um, I also have a theory that, like, if the Entwives were a part of the story, it would be, like, way shorter. Probably yeah. so. That being said, I do still support their decision to go off oh, and do their own thing. Oh, yeah. Because those men. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I'm like. They must have, I'm, I was like, man, these, these Ents really must not be... Must not be it because all of the Ant Wives left. They all got mm-hmm. together. All the girls. <laughs> 
popped up in their ride and they said bye. What's the song? All the women independent. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm just running, I'm not, I'm running off with that in the background. Mm-hmm. So remember how I was like, oh, I'm so glad Legolas and Gimli are back. Um, I immediately take that back because they have this entire conversation in like Shakespearean language. <laughs> and I ha- I had to reread it like 20 times. And I yeah. still don't rem- remember exactly like, what they were yeah. talking about. Legolas breaks out into a song. Like, it's a whole... He, he, it's, he, it's a lot. It, there is no reason for it. Just sometimes, you know, you gotta get... Jump into, you know, poetry with your homies. Y'all don't do that? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> so I think after my, like, 15th billionth reading of this, like, tiny conversation, it comes down to them being, like... They're talking about the decay of Minas Tirith and they're like, yeah, well, that kind of happens when time passes and everything. That's sad, but that doesn't matter because we're all going to be dead soon, probably. <laughs> yeah, basically. Essentially. They're like, it'd be great if that didn't happen. But, you know, probably time and though. men and whatnot and really bagging on men. Uh, so <laughs> they were they, they don't see it for men, which, but- you know. They make points. I mean, I also don't. That That's something we talk about a lot in our podcast, comparing the, like, three races. Because, like, elves and dwarves and all them don't really see it for the race of men. And they always are, you know, have snide remarks about them. And honestly, when I'm reading it, I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we're not that great. <laughs> I mean, like, if I was an elf, I like, I would never leave Lothlorien. I don't blame them. You yeah. know? Oh, never. Like, no. Just why bother? So they meet Mary and Pippin in the courtyard, and Tolkien makes a nice pun. Uh, and there they found their friends in the garden, and their meeting was a merry one. Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't even get that until... Uh, until <laughs> I don't think it out. was an intentional pun. I just picked up on that because my podcast is named after a pun. So <laughs> it's like my job. I'd be failing if I didn't point out the puns, so whatever. Then after like catching up and and talking for a little bit, Mary and Pippin are like, okay, you got to tell us what happened because you keep just name dropping like Paths of the Dead, Which Army so of the annoying. Dead. Which is so annoying. You know you have those friends who are like, yeah, you know, that was me, me my friend. <laughs> um, Tom Cruise were just hanging out. That, and it's like, wait, 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 wait hold what? on. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can you rewind it? And they're like, no, no, it doesn't matter anyways. <laughs> or like, have you seen The Good Place where, um, I, I where, uh, uh, t- uh t- Tahani. Tahani. Tahani, she's always yes. just like, me and my friend so-and-so and like, doesn't expound, just name drops it and moves on. I haven't been this upset since my good friend Taylor was rudely upstaged by my other friend Kanye, who was defending my best friend, Beyonce. And Legolas and Ghibli are like, I mean, it was, it was dark times, Harry. It was very dark times. And... <laughs> Gimli refuses to talk at all at first. And Legolas is like, okay, I'll tell you. And basically, it's just a long story about what a boss Aragorn is. I also like when Legolas, again, with the dragging men and just mortals, he says, what does he say? Where is it? He says that, like, because the their spirits of men, basically, that they're powerless and frail as he deemed them to be. So he was like, it wasn't that scary to me because <laughs> yes, yes. spirits of men. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Yeah, where they're is it? I know good. exactly. Basically, he's like, but I'm, I'm an elf, so I wasn't terrified. Oh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I will tell you enough for your peace. For I felt, I felt not the horror, and I feared not the shadows of men, powerless and frail as I deemed them. Yeah, <laughs> like meanwhile, right. Gimli is like, I'm so ashamed. I, I was so scared. <laughs> He's like, this is the scariest thing I've ever had to do. And Legolas is like, I mean, they're men. They're men. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> what were they gonna do? He's like, I'm an elf. I'm obviously the most competent, beautiful person in this group. So true on like, all points. <laughs> I, I, that's like. Uh, yeah, I love Legolas so much. It's 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 just like when they were on in the mountains in Fellowship, um, and he was like, and he like they're all like, you know, buried in snow, and he's just like lightly <laughs> treading on top. He's like, oh, y'all are cold. Wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's just is not. Weather affects you. Oh man, can't imagine. Can't relate. I remember this now that like 
in the early days of this book discussion and stuff, I was like, oh, he's the Regina George of the group. <laughs> <laughs> Except like without a burn book and getting hit by a bus. Right. So <laughs> Definitely not hit by a bus. Yeah. Might have a burn book. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe sassy sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? Legolas having a... Yeah, Legolas has a burn book. That's canon now. <laughs> yeah, I definitely I definitely think so. Exactly as Tolkien intended it. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so he talks about how once they got to, once again, I make fun of it, the place they were going to raise the army of the dead is called Eric. It, I just think that's funny because it's just like such, it's like a basic white boy name and in the middle of this like high fantasy world. Um, Anyway, (laughs) and he says, for in that gloom, the shadow hosts seemed to grow stronger and more terrible to look upon. Some I saw riding, some striding, yet all moving with the same great speed. Silent they were, but there was a gleam in their eyes. And Aragorn calls them to his, I don't know, whatever, to listen to them. And, Legolas was amazed and remembers thinking, even the sh- even the shades of men are obedient to his will. And it's just, yeah, Aragorn just being a boss and everyone is like, oh, I, I should also, that like when they start this, they're uh, Gimli and Legolas, when they start talking about this, they're both like, oh, I would like, let me, let me make this clear. I would never in my life do this for anyone except for Aragorn. Mm-hmm. He is the only person. Right. Gimli is like. like, I would have turned around if Aragorn was not still leading me. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool to see. I like I I've been making fun of Aragorn a lot so far in this book <laughs> because first he has he has this moment early in Return of the King where he goes off with a Palantir and he comes back and I make fun of him and I'm like, oh, he's emo now. <laughs> because they talk they talk about like, oh, he's he is much changed and he looks darker and paler and and he talks about the paths of the dead and all this stuff. Yeah. Um, after I finish reading this chapter and we'll get to it, but I messaged Fion and I was like, he's so dramatic. <laughs> He's a drama king. Yes! Like, absolutely. It's so much. <laughs> oh my god. And then I also hated on him when he disrespected my homegirl, Eowyn. And Look. <sighs> it's not his it's not his finest moment. It's not Look it. I am team justice for Eowyn. Yes. Yes. That's all I can say until you see the movies, but like that's just my stance. <laughs> Oh, I'm 100% behind it. I've joked that I'm going to write Lord of the Rings from the perspective of Eowyn, and it's going to be called Eowyn, A Tale of Spite. And <laughs> it's going to be her. Oh, and also, I forgot, like, Aragorn. In the previous chapter, Gandalf is like, oh, I think Eowyn's been depressed because she is a boss <laughs> in a society made for men. And then Aragorn's like, I don't know. I think it might be that I didn't love her back. <laughs> and it's like, that's 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 not it, bro. That's not the point. But okay. He's like, I ha- but have you seen me? Right. <laughs> He's like, I understand. I'm beautiful. But also. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's not to love about me? I know. Who could blame her? Right. Okay. It, but like, all that being said about Aragorn, it is really great and like fantastic to see this journey that he's been going on since we met him when he was first introduced as Strider and he's this mysterious figure sitting in the pub and is like brooding by himself in the corner (laughs) and then now he's like this huge like powerful leader and in the previous chapter we saw him not only being a like powerful manly man but he was also shown to be very like he's very healing literally and Mm he heals his friends and um is like a man of the people essentially and so it's really obviously given that this book is named return of the king i have an i have a a idea (laughs) of, of who of who exactly this king is. Mm-hmm. It could um, be anyone. So, like, it's really great to see him, like, growing into that role. Yeah, his story arc, or like you were saying, his character arc from Fellowship is not what I expected. Again, because we both 
came at it from seeing the movies first and then reading the books. It's not what I expected, but I think it's very, it's more rewarding, I guess, by comparison for those who've seen, <laughs> seen both. Um, because yeah, he starts out, again, he's very dramatic throughout, like in the books, like he's, he's a drama king and I think it's hilarious. And I think when Tolkien wrote it, like he thought it was like, oh, this is every time he wrote these things, it's like, oh, this is a moment. But I'm like, that's just so dramatic. And it's extra. so dramatic. <laughs> it's so dramatic. But besides that, his growth in all the other aspects is cool to see, to see him, like you said, become this kingly figure. Because when we meet him in fellowship, he just isn't. And the fact that he's like, I don't want to be king. I mean, he doesn't say exactly like that, but basically is like shunning it makes more sense at that stage. Yeah. So they, after they raise the army of the dead, they make their way across the land, sort of. Eventually they get to a body of water. I'm just not going to question that, (laughs) of how that worked, (laughs) because I just give up whenever I try to track anything when Tolkien's like first they went westward toward <laughs> yep, he makes sure you know every step <laughs> he along knows. the way oh yeah and it's I'm one like, of those things where like you know I don't know west and east like I don't know my directions like that and so you're telling me this and I'm like this means nothing to me in my head like this is great I'm glad that y'all made it to where y'all need to go but I don't, I don't the see level it. of detail I'm not following along on yeah. the map yeah. he could have just said <laughs> They got there somehow. And they got there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they went over a mountain. It, they were there. <laughs> yeah. But Tolkien's like, well, pull out, pull out your maps, kids. Get your finger yep. along and here's Get where your we're going. compass. <laughs> he would have been like the most intense Boy Scout leader. Ooh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like Tolkien, I wonder if, I'm sure I'll find out because after I'm done with like all of this stuff, I'll, at some point I'll do the Tolkien movie Mm-hmm. Where he's, mm-hmm. where he, where the the uh, the commercial was like teacher taking attendance, and it's like Tolkien. And he's like, actually, it's Tolkien. And I was like, oops, oh, wow. already, <laughs> already called my podcast. That's what I'm talking about. So whatever. Anyway, oh, wow. um, but like, I'm sure he had to have taken his son into the woods and just given him like a compass and a map and been like. Have fun. See you tomorrow. (laughs) Bye. Because that's his idea of a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Walked him blindfolded into the middle of a forest (laughs) and just been like, find your way back to me and your mom. (laughs) Don't worry about it. And also, you're going to have to draw a whole map of of where you've been when you get Mm -hmm. back. So make sure you're paying attention where you're going. Because that's going to be the test. Yeah. And as they're traveling, they come across various forces of evil who they are like totally able to decimate essentially with this army of the dead and as they're tra- so legolas like takes a break of course for a nice elf song of course because uh, they always got it yeah are you you've only <laughs> been like reading the like physical book or have you uh sometimes when i plan far enough in advance i also listen to the audiobook yeah because i was gonna say if I mean, I assume everybody who's listening has read them, but if you haven't, or you're like, I want to one day, the audiobooks help in that the guy sings the song. So when you're reading a song that you've never heard, it's just words. And like, I can't, I can't read them. I'm so sorry to Tolkien for doing the work, but he (laughs) sings them. They're not the best, but it's easier. (laughs) Right. Do you guys ever try to like, as you're reading a song, try and make up a tune in your head to be like... I ha- I mm, I did with the sorting hat like in Harry Potter right, because, yeah. but but also it was like very easy to follow what was happening so you can easily just mm-hmm. be like you know whatever but every other time I've kind of just been like uh, why like, <laughs> yeah. like I understand like the I understand it but I also like when you're reading it it doesn't like hit the same so yeah i try but um usually what ends up happening is it devolves into some sort of like nursery nursery rhyme too yeah. and then i'm like okay i just gotta just yeah gotta. i was gonna say that's that's what usually happens with me is when i'm like reading a song i find that my brain tries to naturally make up a tune and then it usually turns into like twinkle twinkle little star or right. something whatever um anyway so legolas sings this song about how beautiful the landscape is and blah and then he finishes it and says green are those fields in the songs of my people but they were dark then gray wastes in the blackness before us 
And so that's dark, literally. And then they come to a ocean with a bunch of birds and seagulls and stuff flying around. And he remembers, he says, did not the lady tell me to beware of them? And I was like, oh, I think, of course, this is like, this is just Tolkien expecting us to remember something that happened. I think it was... I think it was in Fellowship of the Ring, and I think it, I think the lady he's referring to is Galadriel. So it was like 600 pages ago. And I was like, I'm going to be a good podcast host. I say this all the time. I'm going to be a good podcast host and go back and look up something, and I never do it. <laughs> and I went to go do it, and I literally can't find... Like, I remember reading it, but I couldn't find, without having to, like, reread four chapters or whatever, I couldn't find what they were referring to. But I remember is... Galadriel gave these like vague riddles about how everyone's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Essentially. I don't remember. I'm sure. Like when I read it this time, I was like, did she? And because I did, right. I was like, oh, it's got to be Galadriel. And I was like, did she say that? Why? That's so specific. <laughs> yeah. But um, probably. Yeah. Tolkien, he loves doing that. He's like, do you remember? I was telling you like 600 pages ago about how this thing's yeah. going to happen. Well, that that thing, we're talking about it now again. So catch up. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, no, of course I don't remember it. (laughs) I just, I imagine, I've always thought this, like imagining him talking to his friends as he's writing Lord of the Rings or like his family, like what was those conversations? Like, you know, when you're in these conversations, which when somebody's just going off and you're trying your best because you care for this person and they're really excited, but you're like, I don't, I don't know what he's saying. (laughs) And I'm just sitting here nodding and smiling. (laughs) And I'm starting the panic because he's going to ask me questions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why his best friend was C.S. Lewis. He right, needed exactly. someone Boom. like equally crazy. Yeah. So they come to the sea where there's this army of Sauron's forces on ships and everything. And Aragorn says, this is going to be a longer quote. Now come by the black stone, I call you. And suddenly the shadow host that had hung back at the last came up like a gray tide, sweeping all all away before it. Faint cries I heard and dim horns blowing and a murmur as of countless far voices. It was like the echo of some forgotten battle in the dark years long ago. And this is where, uh, couple chapters ago i was just like what so can anyone explain exactly what the the army of the dead does and this is what they do they just like i i'm gesturing with my hand (laughs) they just go like yeah just it's like a swarm yeah kind of like yeah descends upon yeah and um but uh uh, a lot of oh yeah um i like how he calls it a gray tide because i was also trying to imagine like so are these ghosts are they zombies like what exactly i was kind of confused so like but this image of a gray tide gray is like a very sickly color here and um sweeping over everything uh paints a vivid image and they Go for the boats. All the mariners were filled with madness. Oh, my God. And all the mariners (laughs) were filled with a madness of terror and leaped overboard. And that's how they get the ships. They come back with more guns and ships. And so their balance shifts. That they show up in as like the Chekhov's gun for the Battle of Pelennor Field. Right. So it's nice to have these... Be, being filled in on the story where those gaps were of like, how? Just how? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and Legolas says, in that hour, I looked on Aragorn and thought how great and terrible a lord he might have become in the strength of his will had he taken the ring to himself. And just Aragorn being cool again, but also like, <laughs> it's a good thing that he doesn't right. have the ring. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's one of those things that like, I would like to see it, but not like, actually like maybe right. like some cool fan art like what is that like because it would be Ooh, yeah. terrible but mm-hmm. like not really but great because obviously <laughs> <laughs> terrible but great but great yeah i'm uh i love les miserables the mm-hmm. musical les less miserables mm-hmm. and one of the characters uh who 
His name is Anjaras, and he leads the student rebellion. And the original text that Victor Hugo wrote, he wrote, there's a line that describes him. And it's like he, um, actually, I want to look up the exact, let's see. There it is. Andras was a charming young man capable of being terrible. And that's just a, a like great description of a lot of um I think also a lot of the characters in this, but yeah, especially Aragorn capable of being terrible. And that's the thing that like, you really have to look out for and be like, that's tricky. Let's not like tempt that. Cause mm-hmm. he could also a moment of like, I'm glad we're on his side. Right. <laughs> Which also speaks to like, we'll get to it, but Gandalf's point later about how like, there's a lot of people on this side that Sauron is not, it's making Sauron doubt himself. So Aragorn, a big one. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And then Aragorn says, Hear now the words of the heir of Isildur. Your oath is fulfilled. Go back and trouble not the valleys ever again. Depart and be at rest. So he sends the army back and basically it's like, okay, you can, I don't know, cross over to the other world, however death works here, whatever happened to this army, they're done. They've served their purpose. And this is where... (laughs) In the Battle of Pelennor Fields chapter, my guest and I, Valerie, had like a long conversation because when Aragorn shows up, it says like Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli and named a bunch of the other characters that were with them, like jumped off the ships and started fighting. And it didn't mention the army of the dead, but I just naturally assumed because we hadn't seen this part yet that the army of the dead was with them. And Valerie being really sneaky and smart she claims that she didn't remember what happened but she because i when i was i was like recapping it was like yeah so aragorn and the army of the dead jump off and they murder everything and it's great and valerie was like wait does it say the army of the dead and i was like okay maybe not (laughs) (laughs) and like had me second guessing everything and so This is, and then I went into a whole spiel about like, seriously, we just had this whole side journey with Aragorn about going to see the Pass of the Dead, and we're just going to gloss over that and pretend like it's all fine, and we're not going to get to see the army of the dead kill everything. Like, what was even the point? And so here's the point now where I say like, I was very wrong. (laughs) Obviously, now I know that. We didn't gloss over it, and the army of the dead was not at the Battle of the Pelennor Fields because Aragorn dismissed them here. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's just such a that is also a boss moment where he's like, "I hold your oath fulfilled," or whatever he says, just like fulfilling things that his predecessors didn't, and like keeping his word. We love a king, yeah, or maybe a king. He's not a king yet, but he's trying. He's he's, he's growing. Tr- he's trying growth. to return. <laughs> Uh, he's trying to return Um, but we love you know men that can keep their word we'd love to see it because these books and these characters be full of treachery man these other men denethor yikes (laughs) i know i know i i was reading this i was like oh man we miss denethor because but thank goodness because i (laughs) can't stand him no yeah Oh my god. I just like, I love Denethor just for like the dramatics of the whole situation. Everything I do is so dramatic and flamboyant. It just makes me want to set myself on fire. Sure. Like, I can appreciate the, I can appreciate the drama. Like, he's just so, so extra. <laughs> but Aragorn, yeah, he's just, it's, yeah, it's nice yeah. after getting so many disappointing men. Aragorn's like, all right, all right, it's fine. I got this. And as they are going up the river, ocean, lake, I don't know, a body of water, (laughs) I think a river, (laughs) the tides and winds aren't on their side. And Legolas has like a little elf moment where he looks off into the distance with his elf eyes. And he doesn't tell anyone what he sees, but he says... Oft hope is born when all is forlorn. And everyone's like, shut up, Legolas. <laughs> <laughs> Not the time. Oh, my gosh. And he doesn't say what he sees. Because also, they can they see off in the distance a glow. And they're like, oh, that's that's Minas Tirith. Minas Tirith and is also, burning. And also Denethor. Yeah. 
It's 50% that goal is 50% Dinopore. Yes, they just don't know it. Um, Yeah, they're like, oh, Minas Tirith is on fire. This is not, this is not good. Legolas is just very, he's like, don't worry, guys. It'll all be fine. Oh, and then they, yeah. So then they like catch up to the point where Merry and Pippin are familiar with what happened. They showed up, saved the day. It was great. And, um... I like this line, Legolas says, Great deed was the writing of the paths of the dead, and great it shall remain, though none be left in Gondor to sing of it in the days that are to come. So he just wraps up this little tale with like, yeah, it was pretty epic. Too bad no one's going to be alive to tell it <laughs> to other people. But Yeah, he's like, it was lit, but only we're going to know about it, um, I guess. Yep. Taking it to the grave. Yeah, so that kind of catches us up to in the present to Legolas to the like a plot of the this chapter because then we switch to Aragorn and Imrahil and all the competent people (laughs) (laughs) he got team competent and team B that's yeah yeah. (laughs) um because I forgot to mention at the start of the chapter Legolas and Gimli are like oh Imrahil great can you show us how to get to Minas Tirith and he's like oh I'll have to send someone else because I have to go see Aragorn and we're gonna go do something and so now we're seeing what they're talking about. And it's, uh, long story short, not good, <laughs> is the diagnosis here. Gandalf tells everyone, he's like, so even though Denethor went crazy and set himself on fire, he technically wasn't wrong. Yeah. <laughs> because he says, nonetheless, it cannot be doubted that when Denethor saw great forces arrayed against him in Mordor and more still being gathered, he saw that which truly is. And I was like, okay, so he... He was, you know, his actions were somewhat warranted, you know. He was it, he it's was one of those like it's not a it's not an excuse, but it's a it's a reason. It's an explanation. <laughs> it's, not, yeah. 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 it's an explanation. Yeah. Is exactly it. Yeah. It's it's not a great explanation. No, no. but it is but one. You gotta, it, it's like, you know, the, the saying, a broken clock is right twice a day. Twice a day so. yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's a great saying. When, right. you, when you started it, I was like, yeah, uh-huh, that saying with the <laughs> clock. And then I was like, oh, wait, no, I actually, I do, yeah, no, I do know this. That one saying, yeah. <laughs> and he was right about that one thing. He was wrong about a lot of other things, including just how to be a parent. But yeah. he was right about that one thing. <laughs> I've gotten so many great people send me, um, because they know I love a good meme, they send me Lord of the Rings memes, and I've gotten sent one a couple times of, have you, do you guys know what bento boxes are? Yeah. yeah. It's a breakfast that's like made all cutesy, Mm -hmm. and like the sandwich has been made out of a bear, and it's, and that's Boromir's breakfast, and then (laughs) Faramir's breakfast is like the piece of bread that has like the bear cut out of it. (laughs) So, like, Denethor made uh, Boromir the, like, cute little bear-shaped toast oh and then gave the, like, crust to Faramir. <laughs> um, but that's exactly, like, his parenting uh, style, if you could call it that. Yeah. Also his his leadership skills, Ooh. because mm-hmm. which Gandalf gets a little dig at, because... Gandalf is like, so there's two options. We can sit here and wait to die. <laughs> and Imrahil is like, seriously, you want us to just sit here like sitting ducks, I guess, <laughs> and just just wait and do nothing? And Gandalf is like, I mean, that's not really any different from what Denethor was having you do up until like two weeks ago. Well, so. <laughs> and I, oop. And I, oop. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And then they move on to their next option, which there's this great line that is like super relevant, shall we say. It says, other evils there are that may come, for Sauron is himself but a servant or a mystery. Yet it is not our part to master all the tides of the world, but to do what is in us for the... I don't think I've ever seen this word in my life. Sakor. Sukor. I'm not sure. I don't actually know. Yeah. (laughs) Great. (laughs) We are all adults of the English speaking language. You have these two Ravenclaws. I don't know what house you are. I'm a Slytherin. I'm a a secondary Slytherin. What's up? But yeah, between the three of us, we can't. Nope. 
Nope. Like we're all, okay, me ruining this like great poignant <laughs> quote. Whatever. To do what is in us for the, whatever this word is, of those years wherein we are set, uprooting the evil in the fields that we know so that those who live after may have clean earth to till. What weather they shall have is not ours to rule. So it's a great, very relevant quote about like, we have to do, it might be hard and difficult for us, but we have to, it's our duty to try and make this place a better place for the people who are going to come after Mm us. And I love that. I love that line, uprooting the evil in the fields so that those who live after may have clean earth to till. Mm. Mwah. Italian characters, ki- whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, so no. interesting, too, because at the same time, like, he's, it's like, because in the beginning, he's like, Sauron is still not, like, the the biggest bad that is like, but this is our, this is the problem we have now. So, like, our folks in the future yeah. can't even deal with whatever comes next if we don't, like, deal yeah. with this, too. So, like, that's also interesting. It's kind of, like, prioritizing, I guess. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. It's not, like, a super comforting quote because he's saying, like, Sauron is not going to be the end all and be all of evil people. Right. Like, unfortunately, the way that the world works is that there's going to be more darkness and evil after him. But we can't worry about that right now because that's going to be for like, that's our kids problems, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we have to deal with Sauron because that's our responsibility to future generations. And I think it's kind of like to buy on his point, like now, yikes at the now, yikes mm-hmm. at 2020. But um, I think yeah. <laughs> now there's on between, you know, there's groups of people on these on different sides of these debates. But like, there's people who are like, well, things are always going to like, there's always bad stuff in the world. Like, you just need to be positive or whatever. There's those people who are like, just be positive, And like, there's always going to be badness, but we don't have to focus on it. And like, bad apples and whatever else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like, but that's the point. Like, the point is that there is always going to be bad stuff to be dealt with in the world. But if we don't, like, by on you were saying, if we don't deal with this now, mm-hmm. they won't be, we won't be able to deal with the other bad stuff. It's better to have this much, like a little mm-hmm. yeah. bad stuff and able to conquer it and deal with it as it comes rather than, oh, there's this new bad stuff, but we still have Sauron over here while and he's been while and now for a millennia because right. people just keep <laughs> passing the buck instead of you know trying to do something addressing the problem yeah. because yeah. you know uh do you ever do any of your guests ever talk about like non-spoilery world building stuff oh yeah okay well because like tolkien imagined that this was like our ancient history so like just imagine if right now we were sitting here and like Sauron was also <laughs> a problem in 2020 <laughs> like can you imagine <laughs> You know what? Honestly, the way that 2020 is going, I I expect an appearance by Sauron by I at least be September. Yeah. You know, like let's just let's just get it over with. <laughs> it might as this is the year of like yeah, sure that might as well also happen every time. Every time mm-hmm. I open the news. So if I open the news tomorrow and like there's rumors are, are going right. around that the One Ring has been found, I'd be like, like uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I guess so. (laughs) Have you guys seen those um, people have been making like 2020 bingo cards? (laughs) I think I maybe saw like a couple. I saw it like earlier on. Of like just ridiculous events that are happening. There's stuff that's like Trump nudes leak. Oh no. Oh no. And and, like Queen Queen of England gets Corona. Oh Um, man. And then like really random stuff like... um, dinosaurs return (laughs) but like random stuff like that has been happening so like it sounds crazy we're saying it right now but who knows in a month from now (laughs) what will have happened we people may listen back to us and be like oh the nudes did leak so (laughs) that reminds me um we're recording i've i've found that I need to say what date I record things yeah. on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially because this episode actually is going to come out two weeks from now. I can't remember. So this is June 18th. Please forgive us if something insane happened after the fact that we sound really insensitive to. Maybe yeah. like dinosaurs ate Betty White. Oh, no. And- <laughs> oh, no. Maybe. I'm so sorry about that. We didn't. We didn't know. We didn't- <laughs> 
We didn't know, y'all. We also didn't didn't know about the aliens making contact. Like, I know that didn't go over as well as we'd hoped. So I didn't know about the at the time of recording, but I'm sure I'm talking about it on Twitter. So (laughs) (laughs) anyway, yes. So make things better for our future generations. Go Gen Z. You're going to save us all. (laughs) They got it. (laughs) Gandalf gets down to the he basically says, like, the ring is away from us. And it's in Mordor, where it should be going. And our only hope is if we distract Sauron and draw him out here and try to use up all of his, you know, resources and power and um, kill off as many of his servants or whoever as possible so that Frodo and Sam can sneak in and destroy the ring. And I was like... You mean to tell, I was like, this is cool and all, but like, you mean to tell me this entire like insane fantasy story hinges on like, we're going to distract Sauron (laughs) while Frodo and Sam run behind them. And like, that's the plan. Mm -hmm. That's the whole plan. That is the whole plan. Like not, not only is it the whole plan, he like makes it very clear that no other plan is going to work. Any other scenario, we die. The only plan that can work is this diversion. Right. (laughs) Especially, he's he's like, also, this plan, we will probably die. We will probably die. (laughs) But we might also win. Possibly. (laughs) Yeah. We don't know. He says, we must walk open-eyed into that trap with courage, but small hope for ourselves. Um, For my lords, it may well prove that we ourselves shall perish utterly in a black battle far from the living lands, so that even if Barad-Dur, whatever, (laughs) Barad-Dur can be thrown down, or be thrown down, we shall not live to see a new age. But this, I deem, is our duty, and better so than perish nonetheless, as we surely shall if we sit here. And know as we die that no new age shall be. And then they're, oh, it literally, I was about to say, and then they all go quiet. The next line is, they were silent for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and then just like kind of a repeat of what I've been told the Council of Elrond is in the movie where they're like, you have my axe and my <laughs> sword and, and everything. Yeah. Everyone yeah. goes around the room basically and is like, I'm in. Sounds good. Dope. Let's do it. Yeah, literally nobody is like, well, no. hold on a minute. Just because we're going to die doesn't mean I want to die tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's just like, hmm, I see your point. Yeah. I am. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go throw hands, I guess. <laughs> and this conversation ends with, it says, this then was the end of the debate of the Lords. And I was like, that wasn't a debate. No. They all pretty much agreed. <laughs> at all. And I feel like, too, like they should have. Because like at this point, like you're going to not listen to Gandalf? Oh, yeah. Well, because there was there was a moment in the previous chapter where, uh, as I call it, the like competent people, <laughs> I think it was Imrahil, Aragorn, and Aemir. They all get together and Aragorn's like, okay, Imrahil, I'm not going to like come for you right now. We'll wait until after w- to see if we're still alive. Then I'll be the king. But you take over. You keep leading. You're doing great. And then they're all like, but actually, Gandalf is in charge, right? right. We all agree on that. <laughs> yeah. like, yep. Gandalf is in charge. <laughs> exactly. Like this, it's it's uh, just like this understood thing, like, and they're relieved about it, too. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I'm saying you're in charge, and you're telling me I'm in charge, and that's cool, but you know that, like, it's not me, right? No. Oh, thank gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It wasn't me. I'm like, sure. no. <laughs> I didn't got it. I don't have it. <laughs> it's... It's like when you sit down to take a test and you look at your friend and you're like, um, so did, did you study? And they're like, no, did you? And you're like, no, I didn't. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. We're, bo- we're both screwed. Yeah. Okay, great. Right. <laughs> like, this it's is not good. Just but like up until that point when you're walking to class, like, oh, yeah, we have that test. You're both like acting like you got it. Like, yeah, yeah, I got that test. Yeah, I, I totally remembered about it, too. And <laughs> <laughs> yep. And so they they also agree that they will still leave behind a uh, army of some kind to protect Minas Tirith because Imrahil at least has like the I don't know optimism in him to be like if we survive if we survive this we still need to make sure that like there's Minas Tirith to come back mm-hmm. to so we need to leave some our, some forces here to protect that and then they do like a whole paragraph of math where they're like 
this person <laughs> contributed 2000 this person contributed 500 this per-. and i'm like tolkien just say it's like 8000 what it's you fine know? no we need at least two paragraphs no. come on <laughs> we need to know exactly how many of the rohirrim are on horses and how many are not <laughs> right right <laughs> The Rohirrim, the first thing that they said, or Aemer was like, well, I mean, we're going to be like fighting not to our greatest because like all of our horses are dead. Right, so, so which which is kind is of our thing. <laughs> horses. Right. Like, oh, um, which by the way, I just want to share this like really funny thing that my friend's mom said. And she thinks that we should address all of these Confederate monuments by taking the men off and you just leave the horses. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, that's great. Actually, wait, that's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, not mad at it. <laughs> like, all the I don't think it would actually work that way because I imagine like, that like, yeah, probably, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's probably. made as like one yeah. piece, but like. <laughs> But, like, theoretically, uh, I'm into it because, like, a surprise, like, I don't know where you live, but I'm from Texas. Like, a surprising amount of them are on horses. And, like, just aesthetically, it would be real nice if we just had statues yeah, of horses, horses everywhere. I actually live on Monument Avenue in Richmond, Virginia. So okay. Okay. <laughs> so I walk out. And right at the corner is one of the statues that's been graffitied or whatever. And then you go up a couple more blocks, and then there's one that they've already pulled down. Love to see it. Uh, And then there's the really big one, Robert E. Lee, that's probably been on the news the most, Mm -hmm. which, frankly, I really hope no one tries to pull it down on their own, because they will be crushed. And Mm. that's, like, not good if you're just... Putting it out yeah. there. If you're gonna go tear down statues, at least make sure no one's in the way, please. Like <laughs> yell timber, you know. Like, don't. <laughs> but like these things, it's huge. So like, I hope that like no one tries to do something stupid that will you will literally it, it will crush you to death. And like that's not you don't want that right. going in the news. Like man crushed to death by bronze that statue. For, for me, horse. that is not how I want to go. I no. do not want to get yeah. crushed by Robert no. E. Lee. Like that is not. But. I mean, a little bit. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, horses. But is he on I a horse? I feel like the Rohirrim. The Ro- huh? But is he on a horse? Yes. Ah, look, I'm just saying a giant horse statue. It's not a bad mm, idea. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, and I think the Rohirrim would also agree. Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they would. They would show up to like the south. And why do you have so many men on your horse statues? I'm so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, it would be like, why did you ruin this amazing horse statue with a man? Yeah. Like, what's wrong with you? Stop that. <laughs> oh, poor Rohirrim. Anyway, um, Emery Hill has this like moment, like. I imagine it's like an out of body experience where he's like, can we all stop and be like, hey, this is kind of ridiculous for a second. <laughs> he's I like, laugh. this is, this is crazy, right? Right? Like, like this is like, we're going to do it. But like, this is crazy. This is, like, this it's is not just nuts. me. Like, <laughs> he's like, this is a joke, right? And Gandalf is like, if it's a joke, no one's laughing. And the chapter ends with this line. It says, Then he drew Andriel and held it up glittering in the sun. You shall not be sheathed again until the last battle is fought. That's why when I finished, I messaged Bion and I was like, he's so dramatic. So dramatic. What is he? What? Yes. You're just going to ride the rest of the way with the sword in your hand when you have a perfectly good, like, <laughs> sheath. That's what it's like, for. What? Why? Wait till you get to the gate, then pull it out. <laughs> it's okay. He's just... And it's like two days also, from now. So like, they're gonna like, he's like, no, that's true. No, yeah, not gonna. Good night. Gonna- <laughs> that's what I was wondering. That's what I was wondering when he's like, you will not be sheathed again until the last battle is fought. I was like, you're not leaving for a yeah. while. So are you just gonna like walk around with your sword out? Like, you're gonna accidentally hurt. Right. So he's gonna be like, hey, Aragorn. He's gonna turn around. And, like- <laughs> well, there, now we're like, at 6,999 men. <laughs> just gonna keep. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna, the battle's gonna start off and it's gonna be like, and they lost a thousand men (laughs) because Aragorn was too dramatic. And I could just imagine after this chapter ends, Aomer comes up and is like, Okay, dude, but like you can put your sh- your your sword away. And like he's we like, get no. it. Like we get the sentiment. Absolutely, yeah. we're here for yeah. it. 
I peed the vision, you. but like, Please. put it away. <laughs> Relax. Yeah. It's like, mm, no. <laughs> it also seems like to me, also, because like they're inside, right? And I, it just seems like a don't open an umbrella inside type of thing. Yeah. Like, don't unsheathe your sword in some like close quarters. That just seems real. It does. Yeah. Well, okay. Actually, uh, I, in the way I'm picturing it makes it a lot more dramatic. Is I'm picturing him like off by himself on a hill, maybe like overlooking <laughs> everything. <laughs> And he has this moment, and then he's, and then he like takes it out, and it's like, "You shall not be sheathed until the last battle." <laughs> and then he like he angles it so that like the sun it, gleams yeah. down on it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I definitely pictured it with sun gleaming, gleaming off of it yeah. because like and like a glow, definitely. <laughs> Exactly. So but everybody, that's just normal in this world. Like, because everybody, I mean, we don't see because that's literally the last line. But like, I just imagine everybody being like, yeah, that's fine. That's <laughs> that's Aragorn. Yeah. Good yeah. for mm-hmm. you. <laughs> <laughs> or like uh, Gandalf says like, hey, Amr, do you know where? Have you seen Aragorn? He's like, oh, last I saw he was up on the hill. Like. <laughs> Having a moment, so <laughs> he's fine. He's coming. We should have never. We should have never reforged that sword for him. No, like he's- <laughs> give it. Give it another hour. It'll all be good. So, oh my gosh. Oh, well, that was great. Um, where can people find you guys on the internet? So we are at blackgirlscreate.org. Like our website, we can find all of the like thousands of things that we do on Twitter at blk girls create. Um, because it's too many characters to just put black yep, um it. on instagram yeah. though it's at black girls create um and then i'm on twitter at yana y-a-n-a wrote it and i'm at delia dumbledore so oh i love that <laughs> thank you <laughs> and then also can you guys recommend something that you're enjoying that you think people listening might also enjoy it can be a book a movie tv show anything it also doesn't at all have to be related to Lord of the Rings, honestly. Well, Diana the- will have a more sophisticated answer, will so I? I'm going to let her go first. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, like, yikes. I mean, well, what are you going to say? Because okay, I feel like... Basic- <laughs> we're both into the same things same- right okay, now. Yeah, like, we're same- doing the same things. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the two things that, I mean, most of the internet is doing it anyways, because Avatar The Last Airbender on dropped Netflix. on Netflix... We had rewatched it already, yeah. but we're still all in the discourse and the shipping and everything. It's great. It's great out here. Love Avatar. If you have not seen it, there are people I fo- follow on Twitter who are like, this is my first time watching it. It's just it's so good. It's so good. My One of my friends and also um, frequent guest on the podcast, Bethany, she had like memories of it in childhood, but she wasn't, her mom, her parents wouldn't let her watch it because she like Christian family mm-hmm, who was mm-hmm. like, ah, sorcery. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Right. And so she's watched, she watched it now for the first time. And I actually went, we like broke quarantine or whatever to, and I went to her apartment to watch the finale with her. And I just like, I just watched her face. <laughs> And like I made us like pause and reflect after like each part and be like, so what did you think? So how are you that? feeling? <laughs> yeah. So what are your? I was like, what are your predictions? <laughs> anyway, I totally interrupted. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's been a thing. One hundred percent. That's mainly. And then also, we're both doing a Naruto rewatch right now. And if you haven't watched that, also get on that. I hadn't watched it all the way through before, so at this point, it's like my first wa- watch through. And it's real good. And so I think that's all I got. I'm not into anything new because I think right now in the time of COVID, I don't think... We don't have time for that. New things. We're revisiting (laughs) things. We're binging. I can barely get through, like, um, or keep up with, like, the only show that I'm I'm watching, I guess, live is Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but... I only watched the first episode, like I only watched the premiere, and then someone was like, um, somebody in our community was like, oh, episode four, like I'm about to start watching, and I was like, we're on episode four already, like where's where's the time gone, so I need to like catch up, but I love that show so much, so. That's what I did, like this past weekend, I had like a weird stomach bug, so I just like stayed in bed, and I was like, oh, I I think the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. new season is going and I was like, oh, maybe like one episode is out. There were three yeah. episodes out already. And I was like, oh, dang. Yeah. And then as we're recording this, I think that last, last night, night was, was yeah. one. So I need to do that. But I do love that show. And then I'm going to like keep our Avatar train rolling. I literally was going to recommend this anyway. So like, I'm so glad it worked <laughs> out. Um, I may be attacked, but don't come for me. You should watch Legend of Korra. 
if you have finished Avatar and you're like, what do I do now? And I'm going to tell you where you can watch it for free. You can watch it on a website called animedao.com. Anime, D-A-O.com. And not spawn, not sponsored, whatever. <laughs> it's not going to give your... Pro- there are definitely going to be pop-up ads. It's slightly... FBI agent listening. I'm definitely not watching this show on this website at all. Not at all. But Legend of Korra is sh- actually hilarious. It's at this is my I like watched it the first time around when it came out. I don't know, eight years ago. And I enjoyed it then. And I'm watching it again now. And I laugh a lot. So just watch it, okay? I actually haven't watched Legend yeah. of Korra. Um, well, watch Avatar don't listen times. to the haters. Yeah, I, wanna, <laughs> I want to, to watch haters. it because like, I had, my problem was that I had, the last time I did a like Avatar watch, which was like years ago, I tried to watch Korra right after, but I really wanted to like, I realized I really just wanted to stay with like the Avatar characters yeah, at the it. time. But like now I'm just giving myself a little bit more time and then I'm going to watch it. Like, yeah, with yeah. I need to get through Naruto first. But that's my next thing is Legend of Korra. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. I'm just, I, I'm going to be the Legend of Korra spokeswoman for my entire life. It's just don't listen to the haters. I know there's it's mixed like, reviews, oh, yeah. but we do have some very like loud <laughs> advocates for it in our community. The, the like OG Avatar fandom doesn't like it because it does a couple things to the original story, which I understand um not liking but at the same time i think it i i don't think that makes the whole i don't think that ruins the whole show you know that's what i'm talking about as a proud member of wbne you can learn more about that by going to wbne.org where you can also find other shows on the network like this one because i forgot to look up who i was plugging this week Hello from elsewhere. That's the name of our podcast. I'm Casey. And I'm Valerie. On our podcast, we dive deep into the characters and themes behind your favorite movies and books, all through a positive lens. We explore all your biggest pop culture questions, both thoughtful and silly, like what is the symbolism of magical portals in fantasy stories? What would happen if Princess Anna went on a date with Kermit the Frog? And what does the name Kylo Ren mean anyway? Hint, it has something to do with flowers. Isn't that so cute? If it's pop culture, we're interested in exploring the meaning behind it. So come journey through Elsewhere with us, wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, did you know someone once used the word jovial to describe Hello from Elsewhere? Did you know someone once described our podcast as better than a Wookiee hug? That is literally the nicest thing anyone has ever said. The cover art is by Graphite, a.k.a. Vaishon Brandon. You can support him on Instagram at graphite.vmb. You can find the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Tolkien About Pod, as well as join the Facebook group. You can find me on Twitter at mcwhatsup and Instagram at mcturndownforwhat. And you can also support the podcast on Patreon at patreon.com slash TolkienAboutPod. This week's sponsor is Katie Knight. Thank you, Katie, so much for your continued support of the podcast. I appreciate it so much uh, this month, especially since I will be donating June's Patreon funds to the Harry Potter Alliance, which is a just really fantastic organization that does a lot of fantastic, I I think I've said fantastic 20 times because they are, Um, uh, they do a lot of great social justice work for the LGBT community, for gender equality, for racial justice, um, education, youth advocacy, like literally they do so much good stuff and I want to help support them now in this time where, first of all, everything seems horrible, but also after a certain author's comments. Because right now I think it's important to look at the fandom in particular and to really focus on the people who are making a lot of positive change and doing great stuff with this thing that sparked from a book that just so happened to be created by someone who doesn't believe all people are equal, apparently. Uh, I didn't mean to end it on that downer note. Might be. Um, so yeah, just go to patreon.com slash pod if you want to support the podcast. And this month, you will be helping to support the Harry Potter Alliance. Cool. All right. So our so the discussion question from a couple weeks ago was from... Oh, actually, guys, this is perfect because this, this is the question I asked for the Pyre of Dinothor chapter. (laughs) And the discussion question I asked everyone was, uh, tell me about a dramatic fictional death. 
I didn't realize at the time when I was asking this that like I was just asking everyone to relive all the traumatic deaths that like we <laughs> <laughs> watched and like cried yeah. over. Uh, so I try not to like pick too many of the sad ones. Um, on fa- These are all from our Facebook group. Uh, Bethany said Moriarty in Sherlock. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a good one. Uh, Christina said the entirety of Infinity War. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then this was a fun one. Charlie said Zuko's death in the Ember Island players version <laughs> of Avatar. Honor. Honor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And then uh, this week's discussion question, I couldn't come up with a good one because honestly, this chapter is just very, it's like very despairing. <laughs> So in honor of it being Pride Month, actually, I'm not even sure if this episode is going to, I don't think this episode, I think this episode is coming out in July. (laughs) Whatever. Pride Month 24-7. Who cares? Time is a construct Um, in 2020, so (laughs) it's fine. Yeah, Pride (laughs) Year. There we go. I literally just wrote in all caps, make it gay. So tell me what your favorite, like, non-canon Lord of the Rings ships are. There you go. Oh. (laughs) First of all, Frodo Sam, because that, and honestly, that's canon. (laughs) That's, that's, there's no way that they are not together. I get that. I was thinking about this earlier. I was like, but I feel like Frodo just to me gives off like the straightest straight boy vibes ever. I, I'm not, wait till Sam, you, I understand. You, just when you see the movie, Frodo. when you see the movie, it is like, you can't unsee it. Like, like going back to read it, like you can't un, it just is, it is what it is. And then I'm also curious to see listeners tell me who you pair Gandalf with. Who is his <laughs> romantic interest? Everyone. Yikes. I don't know. Like, I want to know, but I also, like, don't want to know. I don't know if you spend much time in fan fiction, but sometimes you see pairings and you're like, oh, oh yeah. Okay. okay. Interesting. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So think about those. Just, just, I hope you think about that as you're trying to fall asleep tonight, no. everyone. <laughs> um, Yikes. <laughs> all right. All that being said, that brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, ladies, do you have any parting words for the listeners? Man, just hang in there. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. And that's what I'm talking about. <laughs>